Jeffrey Pyatt, United States Ambassador to Ukraine. Please. Thank you, Natalia. Um, um, what happened to Malaysian Flight 17 is not a mystery. We know that the aircraft was brought down by an SA-11 missile fired from separatist-controlled territory. We know that separatist training camps continue to operate in Russian territory. We know that Russia continues to send tanks, rocket launchers, heavy armor across the Ukrainian border. I think one of the great tragedies is that in the eight days since the shootdown of the aircraft, rather than take this, as we all hope, as an opportunity to, to put this crisis back on a political and diplomatic track towards resolution, instead what we have seen from the Kremlin is pouring gasoline on the fire. What we have seen is the escalation, the escalation of military transfers across the Ukrainian border. We talked publicly yesterday about the alarming development of artillery fire from into sovereign Ukrainian territory. Ru Russian units, units in Russia, firing across the border into Ukrainian territory, targeting Ukrainian military units. We also have expressed our concern about what we have seen inside Russia, including the possibility that Russia may be mobilizing still more heavy and advanced weapons, including um, more advanced rocket systems, which points to a further escalation of the crisis. So you've spoken about the uh, evidence of uh, training camps inside the Russian Federation and of the uh, weapons armaments pouring into Ukraine uh, and also evidence of uh, shelling of Ukraine territory from inside Russia. And, uh, I was wondering if, um, if there's any evidence, visual or otherwise, that uh, the United States is able to make public and available to us uh, to back up those claims. Well, um, as you know, um, we've already released some imagery from the Rostov region. Um, it's imagery which demonstrates how these facilities are seeing a stepped-up level of military activity. Um, I think uh, Marie yesterday in Washington made the point that the latest statements from the United States reflect a consolidated intelligence view, some of which, of course, we're not going to be prepared to talk about. But I think what I would emphasize standing here in Kyiv if we roll back the clock to the end of February or March, we can all remember the Russian denials. Um, there are no Russian troops invading Crimea. Um, these aren't our little green men. Um, history, of course, tells us that those little green men, in fact, were Russian special forces. Um, history tells us that this fog of uncertainty that was created by the Kremlin eventually led to the illegal annexation of Crimea. So I think bearing that history in mind, uh, bearing in mind what the separatists themselves have said, and I think it's worth remembering uh, these multiple telephone intercepts which the SBU has, has released. We have conducted our own voice print analysis of those intercepts and have concluded that they are genuine. And what those intercepts tell us is that the separatists that the Russian citizens who lead the so-called Donetsk People's Republic are getting regular direction and regular contact with people in, uh, and authorities in Russia. Um, so I think the, the picture is pretty clear when you combine the totality of intelligence information, uh, Ukrainian information, the statements of the separatists themselves. Uh, we have the Vostok Battalion leader's acknowledgment of the possession of the book missile system. So um, again, there will of course be limits to what we are prepared to say publicly when it comes to our intelligence information. But I think the totality of the picture should be clear to anybody who has their eyes open.